let's understand the concept of adjustment of unexhausted basic exemption limit for resident individuals and each of now first of all what is this unexhausted unexhausted means remaining unutilized or remaining unexhausted against normal income now we know pretty well that whenever assessee is a resident individual or huf the basic exemption limit is to be adjusted against normal income first normal income is the one which is taxable as per slab rate slab rate and the other income now if assessee has any of the three types of special income he has got long term capital gain under section 112a or short term capital gain under section 111a 112a is taxable at the rate of 10% after first 1 lakh rupees of long term capital gain and short term capital gain is taxable at 15% rate if it is special short term capital gain covered by 111a and the third one is again capital gain under section 112 this is long term capital gain this is also long term capital gain but this one is short term capital gain under 111a long term capital gain under section 112 is taxable at 20% now if assessee has got normal income also which is taxable at slab rate and he has got any of these three incomes also then basic exemption limit which could be 2 and a half lakh for individuals or 3 lakh for senior citizen or could be 5 lakh for resident very senior citizen if it is huf then basic exemption limit will be 2 and a half lakh only then basic exemption limit is to be first adjusted against normal income and if it remains unutilized that means if the normal income is less than basic exemption then the remaining basic exemption limit is to be utilized against these three special incomes but how is this to be done let us understand but before we proceed further let us first recapitulate our provisions of these three sections starting with section 112a and 111a special long term capital gain special short term capital gain so if you recollect gain arising on transfer of three assets equity shares of company equity units of equity oriented fund and units of business trust which is not there in inter ca syllabus if std securities transaction tax has been paid then the long term capital gain as per 112a exceeding first 1 lakh will be taxable at 10% rate first 1 lakh will not be taxable but this long term capital gain is to be computed without claiming benefit of indexation without claiming chapter 6a deduction and the tax so computed at the rate of 10% will not be entitled for benefit of rebate under section 87a three types of restrictions will apply and from the same three assets if there is short term capital gain then as per section 111a if stt has been paid then short term capital gain will be taxable at 15% of course it is short term therefore indexation is out of question chapter 6a deduction not allowed so chapter 6a deduction is common point between 112a and 111a 87a rebate is the only difference here 87a rebate is allowable against tax calculated under 111a but rebate under 87a is not allowable against tax computed under section 112a this is the only tax or only income the tax on which is not entitled for or not eligible for rebate under section 87a chapter 6a deduction will not be allowed against either of these two incomes indexation is possible only for long term so in short term indexation is out of question now we are done with the tax rate under section 112a and under 111a we will be discussing tax rate under section 112 separately let's finish off with these two concepts first now when will they be called as long term and when will they be called as short term which three assets we discuss equity shares of company units of equity oriented fund units of business trust now out of these three units as far as shares are concerned the period of holding in order to be called as long term the period of holding of shares if they are listed then should be exceeding 12 months not listed on recognized stock exchange then period of holding should be exceeding 24 months in order to be called as long term but as far as units are concerned the listed or not listed makes no difference what makes a difference is whether they are equity oriented or not equity oriented means mutual fund whose units we are talking about the mutual fund in that scheme has invested more than 65% of the available investment more than 65% of the available funds are invested in listed company shares that means it will be equity oriented if it is equity oriented unit whether listed or not listed period of holding should be exceeding 12 months in order to be called as long term and as far as non equity oriented units are concerned period of holding should be exceeding 36 months as far as stt condition is concerned securities transaction tax for 112a section that is long term capital gain 
for these three assets stt should have been paid at the time of transfer for all the three assets condition with regards to stt at the time of transfer is for all the three assets but as far as stt at the time of acquisition is concerned there is a mandatory condition that equity shares of a company will be entitled to long term capital gain on the same will be entitled to 112a benefit only if stt is paid at the time of acquisition also and transfer also but uh, as far as remaining two assets are concerned this condition does not find a place yeah stt at the time of transfer has to be there for all the three assets but stt at the time of acquisition is required or mandatory condition only for equity shares not for other two whether the other two assets have suffered stt at the time of acquisition or not makes no difference okay now let's start with this concept if assessee has any other income also assessee means individual or huf in addition to ltcg referred to in 112a let's start with the first income 112a then same concept for triple 1a and same concept for 112 normal long term capital gain also then ltcg referred to in 112a will be taxable at a flat rate of 10% exceeding first 1 lakh rupees we know pretty well and the normal income other normal income will be tax as per slab rate or normal rate but first we have to compute tax on other income and thereafter only we have to move on to the calculation of tax on ltcg the total tax will then be increased by surcharge and health and education says at the rate applicable now in this concept what exactly let us try to understand with the help of an example what exactly am i trying to tell you supposing the assessee individual like me has got special lt ltcg covered by section 112a whereby first 1 lakh is not taxable so 3 lakh rupees is the total ltcg first 1 lakh not taxable what is taxable is only 2 lakh rupees and assessee has got other income also let's say 2 lakh 70000 then how to calculate tax to so tax to be computed on other income first and then only we move on to calculating tax under 112a assuming assessee has only these two income and is a normal young person like you and me then out of this other income first 2 and 1/2 lakh is the basic exemption limit tax would be nil on this first 2 and 1/2 lakh and only balance 20000 would be falling under 5% slab tax would be thus 1000 rupees nil plus 1000 total tax on normal income will be 1000 however tax on 112a long term capital gain of 2 lakh rupees will be calculated separately here first 1 lakh is not taxable that we have already subtracted 2 lakh will be taxable at 10% tax will be 20000 total tax thus will be 21000 now whether assessee being resident will be eligible for rebate under section 87a or not rebate under section 87a is available only if three conditions are fulfilled which three condition number 1 assessee is individual number 2 is resident and third net income does not exceed rupees 5 lakh how much is the net income in this case net income friends 2 lakh 70000 plus not 2 lakh the net income 2 lakh 70000 plus 3 lakh rupees the amount of ltcg is 3 lakh rupees and not 2 lakh rupees agreed out of 3 lakh first 1 lakh is not taxable taxable amount is only 2 lakh but as far as income is concerned the income is 3 lakh rupees and not 2 lakh rupees understand very carefully out of income of 3 lakh rupees of ltcg first 1 lakh is not taxable or is taxable at 0% rate only balance 2 lakh rupees is taxable at the rate of 10% but it would be incorrect to say that first 1 lakh is exempt first 1 lakh is not exempt under any section like normally for exempt income we have section 10 various clauses of section 10 this 1 lakh is not exempt under any particular clause of section 10 or there is no section it would be wrong to say that first 1 lakh is exempt first 1 lakh correct thing is to say that first 1 lakh is taxable at 0% rate therefore net income is 5 lakh 70000 and which is exceeding 5 lakh rupees therefore rebate under section 87a from this tax of 21000 rebate will not be available however in this example the other income is more than basic exemption so there is no unexhausted or unutilized basic exemption entire basic exemption of 250000 has been utilized however let me take one more example where the ltcg is still 3 lakh minus 1 lakh 2 lakh rupees under section 112a and the normal income is less than basic exemption limit this time let's say it is 1 lakh 50000 then 
tax on this 150000 is to be computed first it will get wiped out against basic exemption limit of 250000 tax would be nil but here friends we have still 1 lakh rupee of basic exemption limit remaining unutilized out of total 2 lakh 50 150 has been utilized 1 lakh is still left out can we use that 1 lakh rupees unexhausted against this 2 lakh rupees of special ltcg under section 112a answer is yes if the assessee is resident individual or resident huf so what will happen is out of this 2 lakh understand total amount is 3 lakh from which 1 lakh rupee i have already subtracted from this balance 2 lakh we will adjust unexhausted basic exemption limit of 1 lakh rupees and only balance 1 lakh rupees of ltcg will be taxable at a flat rate of 10% tax would be 10000 the total tax thus would be 10000 now whether rebate under section 87a will be available or not 87a rebate is available if three conditions are fulfilled third condition was nti should be up to rupees 5 lakh now how much is nti here 1 lakh 50000 plus 3 lakh rupees total nti is 4 lakh 50000 netting which is well within 5 lakh range then also rebate under 87a will not be available because rebate under section 87a is not available on tax under section 112a here entire tax of 10,000 is coming from this 112A. The tax on normal income is nil. Therefore, rebate under 87A will not be available. In the second slide of this particular video, we had checked it out that rebate under 87A is not available against tax calculated under section 112A. But it is available on tax calculated under section 111A or tax calculated under section 112. However, whatever we discuss here, this benefit which we talked about, this is available only for resident individuals and resident HUF. This benefit is however not available to non-residents. Non-residents do enjoy basic exemption limit, but basic exemption limit for non-resident individuals will always be 2.5 lakh. They will never get 3 lakh rupees and 5 lakh rupees of higher basic exemption limit, which is available only for residents. Non-residents cannot claim two and a half non-residents cannot claim three lakh and five lakh so what will happen to non-resident for non-resident everything will remain same in the same example for non-resident everything remaining same normal income one and a half lakh special ltcg two lakhs that is three lakh minus one lakh basic exemption of two and a half lakh is available to non-resident tax would be nil on the normal income but that unexhausted basic exemption limit of one lakh rupees which we used to adjust against this ltcg this benefit is not available to non-residents an entire LTCG will be taxable at a flat rate of 10%. I mean, after excluding first 1 lakh rupees. Total tax will be 20,000. Rebate under section 87A is not available to non residents. Therefore, here not claim. Another reason is rebate under 87A is not available against LTCG, tax on LTCG under section 112A. Here, tax on normal income is nil. Entire tax of 20,000 is coming from. 112a ltcg therefore rebate under 87a is not allowed even if assessi was resident in this example now moving towards next tax rate section triple one a whatever concept we are discussing is applicable for tax under 112a tax under triple one a and tax under section 112 which is normal ltcg 112a we are done with whatever we have discussed will be applicable under triple one a also so i'm going little faster triple one a is short term capital gain arising on transfer of these three assets taxable at 15 percent if std was paid at the time of trans at the time of transfer that is at the time of sale transaction now if assess has got special ltcg 80,000. here there is no uh, zero tax on first one lakh unlike section 112 a here entire stcg will be taxable at 15 percent and say assess has got other income also of two lakh seventy thousand then basic exemption will be allowed let's say it's two and a half lakh against this other income first it is mandatory to set off or uh, adjust basic exemption against normal income first and balance left out called unexhausted can be adjusted against special incomes Tax on first two and a half lakh will be nil on balance twenty thousand at five percent slab rate will be thousand total tax will be one thousand on normal other income special STCG entirely will be taxable at fifteen percent total tax will be twelve thousand on STCG total tax will be thirteen thousand now here the NTI net taxable income is two lakh seventy plus eighty it is three lakh fifty thousand it is well within the range of five lakhs 
and the assessee is resident individual therefore rebate under section 87a will be available against this 13000 of tax but it is available up to 12500 rupees assessee will be liable to pay balance 500 rupees of tax plus of course health and education says at the rate of 4% however in this example other income is more than basic exemption so what will happen if other income was less than basic exemption if other income is less than basic exemption then tax on other income is to be computed first and tax on stcg special stcg is to under triple 1a is to be computed later at 15% rate other income will be taxable at normal rate that is slab rate and stcg under triple 1a will be charged to tax at a flat rate of 15% the total of the tax will then be increased further by surcharge and health and education says if applicable after availing rebate under 87 let us try to understand but for resident individuals and in hum only for residents remember if the other income other than stcg normal income is less than basic exemption lim limit then unexhausted basic exemption limit will be adjusted against special stcg also and only balance short term capital gain under triple 1a will be taxable at 15% let us understand this with the help of an example supposing the special ST stcg under section triple 1a is 2 lakh rupees taxable at 15% and assess he has got other income to be 150000 basic exemption is 250 first tax to be computed against other income and basic exemption to be adjusted first against other income only compulsorily tax would be nil balance 1 lakh rupees of unexhausted basic exemption can be adjusted against special stcg and only balance 1 lakh rupees of special stcg will be taxable at 15% tax will be 15000 total tax will be thus 15000 rebate under section 87a will be available because nti is 1 lakh 50 plus 2 lakh nti is 3 lakh 50 which is within 5 lakh rupees of range and assess will be liable to pay balance 2500 as tax however this is a story of for this is a story for only resident individuals and resident huf not applicable for non residents if the non resident assess is involved in the case then the situation will be as follows for non resident it will be same example other income is 1 lakh 50000 and special stcg covered by section 311a is 2 lakh rupees then basic exemption is available to non residents but always 2 and 1/2 lakh we know pretty well 2 and 1/2 lakh will be adjusted first against other income tax will be nil the balance 1 lakh unexhausted basic exemption limit cannot be set off against special stcg in the case of non resident assessee an entire 2 lakh will be chargeable to tax at a flat rate of 15% tax will be 30000 and rebate under section 87a will not be available because assessee is non resident we know pretty well rebate under 87a is only for resident people if you recollect the previous example after adjusting for resident assessee after adjusting this 1 lakh rupees of unexhausted basic exemption against special stcg only 1 lakh was taxable at 15% tax was only 15000 and rebate of 12500 was available tax payable was just 500 as compared to non resident who will end up paying 30000 rupees of tax vast difference now the last income this concept is applicable unexhausted basic exemption limit to be set off against three types of special income concept applies to 112a ltcg 311a stcg and normal stcg 112 we are done with the first two the last one again the same concept 112 what is the tax rate normal ltcg on transfer of other assets option 1 20% with indexation and option number 2 10% without indexation why do we call it as option 2 because this concept is optional either this or this at the option of the assessee but 10% option is available to all assessee without indexation but it is available only for following two assets listed securities other than units listed on a recognized stock exchange or zero coupon bonds zero coupon bond generally never comes in the exam but real life it could be there listed security other than units this is optional that means for listed securities other than units assessee can either go for 20% option with indexation or can opt for 10% without indexation option and this concept is for all assessee individual hof aop boi ajp company partnership form llp everyone two more assets were introduced one from ay 13 14 one from ay 17 18 that is unlisted security here what we discussed was listed security here it is unlisted security and number 2 shares of private company but these two assets at 10% rate without indexation is possible only for non residents and foreign company and it is mandatory to opt for 10% tax rate without indexation for these two assets 
any which ways from your inter ca examination point of view what is relevant from exam point of view is only the first two assets tax rates we have already discussed in lt in capital gain chapter here i am just revising it to you now whether it is 20% with indexation or 10% without indexation the concept of unexhausted basic exemption limit adjusting it against these incomes unexhausted basic exemption is applicable for this tax also how let us understand supposing the normal ltcg covered by section 112 and not by 112a is 2 lakh rupees and assess he has got normal income of 1 lakh 50000 and he is a young resident person like you and me that is non senior citizen availing basic exemption limit of 2 and 1/2 lakh entire 2 and 1/2 lakh gets adjusted against 1 lakh 50000 of other income first priority to be given to other income and after adjusting when the tax is nil the basic exemption limit remaining unexhausted or unavailable or unutilized sorry not i would not say unavailable unutilized is the correct word is 1 lakh rupees that can be set off against normal ltcg of 2 lakh rupees and accordingly only balance normal ltcg of 1 lakh will be taxable at a flat rate of 20% assuming it is with indexation tax will be 20000 total tax thus will be 20000 and here the net taxable income is again 3 and a half lakh which is less than or equal to 5 lakh rupees therefore assess he can avail rebate under section 87a up to 12500 assess he will have to pay balance tax of 7500 plus health and education says of course however this concept is only for resident individuals and in hof and not for and not for non residents so this i am not explaining you again what will happen for non resident if the assessee is non resident then this will not be available entire 2 lakh rupees will be taxable at 20% tax will be 40000 and rebate under 87a will not be available as compared to a resident person who pays 7500 the non resident will have to pay 40000 tax plus health and education says now we discuss this concept for all the three types of income 112a special ltcg 111 a special L special stcg and 112 normal ltcg what if assessee has got any two of them what if assessee has got these two incomes or these two incomes or what will happen if assessee has got all the three types of income apart from normal other income let us try to understand if assessee being resident individual hof has got special stcg covered by 111a and lt normal ltcg covered by 112 which is taxable at 20 or 10% then unexhausted basic exemption is to be first to be adjusted against normal income only and then what will happen let us try to understand with the help of this example say other income is 2 lakh and special stcg is 1 lakh and he has got normal ltcg under section 112 1 lakh rupees now here there are two different options basic exemption is first to be adjusted against other income that we know pretty well first priority to be given to other income second and third priority we don't know act is silent about it income tax act does not talk about it therefore first of all other income will be taxable at normal slab rate special stcg is taxable at 15% rate and normal ltcg let's say here in this example is taxable at 20% rate then first priority to be given to normal income for that is the rule that is given in the act this is given in the act second and third priority is not clarified therefore if you recollect there is a chapter in your law subject called interpretation of statutes ios which says that there are six rules to interpret the language of law one of the rule out of the six rule is beneficial construction that means if act is silent then assessee is allowed to do whatever is beneficial to him therefore second priority will be given to that income or tax or that particular tax or that income which is taxable at higher rate out of these two which one is taxable at higher rate this one is taxable at a higher rate so second priority will be given to this income and third priority will be given to this income however normal ltcg may not always be taxable at 20% it may be taxable at 10% also so let's try to understand what if if i change the if i change the example if i change the tax rate everything remaining same 2 lakh normal income taxable at normal rate special stcg taxable at 15% and normal ltcg taxable now at 10% instead of 20% as compared to previous example if you understand then in that case first priority to be given to other income that's the rule second and third priority now second priority i will not give to ltcg second priority i will give to that tax rate which is higher 15% so ltcg normal ltcg will be given third priority special stcg will be given second priority and so and so however 
कॉन्सेप्ट इज एप्लीकेबल फॉर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ टैक्सेस और टैक्सेज अंडर टैक्सेज फॉर थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ इनकम ट्रिपल वन ए वन वन टू ए एंड वन वन टू नाउ फर्स्ट टू ना इन दिस एग्जाम्पल वी टुक वी टुक दिस वन एंड दिस वन नाउ वॉट इफ असस ही हेज गॉट ऑल द थ्री इनकम इफ ही हेज गॉट ऑल द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ इनकम अपार्ट फ्रॉम अदर इनकम लेट्स ए दिस एग्जाम्पल देन इन दैट केस वॉट विल हैपन इज एंड अज्यूमिंग दैट नॉर्मल एल टी सी जी इज टैक्सेबल एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट रेट देन फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी टू बी गिवन फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी इन द टैक्स रेट्स विल बी फिफ्टीन परसेंट फॉर स्पेशल एल टी सी जी स्पेशल एस टी सी जी नॉर्मल एल टी सी जी एट ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड स्पेशल एल टी सी जी एट टेन परसेंट अज्यूमिंग दिस वन लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड ऑफ स्पेशल एल टी सी जी इज आफ्टर क्लेमिंग फर्स्ट वन लैक सो इट मस्ट हैव बिन टू लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड माइनस फर्स्ट वन लैक एट जीरो परसेंट रेट ओनली बैलेंस वन लैक फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इज टैक्सेबल विच इज कंसिडर्ड हियर अज्यूमिंग इट दैट वे दैन फर्स्ट प्रायोरिटी टू बी गिवन टू अदर इनकम दैट्स अ रूल सेकेंड थर्ड एंड फोर्थ प्रायोरिटी एक्ट इज साइलेंट यू आर अलाउड टू डू इट इन द वे यू वॉन्ट टू हाइएस्ट टैक्स रेट इज दिस तो सेकेंड प्रायोरिटी विल बी गिवन टू एल टी सी जी नॉर्मल एल टी सी जी थर्ड प्रायोरिटी विल बी गिवन टू स्पेशल एस टी सी जी एंड फोर्थ प्रायोरिटी लास्ट प्रायोरिटी विल बी गिवन टू स्पेशल एल टी सी जी आई होप यू आर वेरी क्लियर विद द कॉन्सेप्ट नाउ सेम थिंग कैन बी री एक्सप्लेन वंस अगेन बाई टेकिंग द टैक्स रेट ऑफ दिस टू बी टेन परसेंट बट देन देर विल बी क्लैश बिटवीन दिस इनकम एंड दिस इनकम बोथ ऑफ देम आर टैक्सेबल एट टेन परसेंट देन यू आर अलाउ टू गिव देन this will be given second this will be given normal income first priority special stcg second priority third and fourth priority can be given to either of these two 34 or 43 as per your wish with that this video comes to an end